side. So, uh, but yeah, uh, welcome to our setting buyer expectations class. So I'll give you, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about signing or anything like that. I know you're here. We're good to go. Um, I'll make sure to give this information over to, uh, to Autumn at the front desk. Uh, and you were in the, what was the last class that we did? It was how to sell a listing in 30 days class, correct? I believe so, yes. Yep. Yeah. So I think that's the first time I really got to really got to talk to you a little bit. Um, this this particular class is actually something that I put together myself. It is my full um, process with, uh, you know, we're talking to clients. So it's going to sound a little weird, might sound a little crazy. Um, however, it makes, I think it makes perfect sense. Um, so, you know, we're just going to go through why setting expectations matter, you know, the timing and when you actually need to set expectations with your clients, what it sounds like. We can do a little role play uh, as well. And then if, obviously, if you have any questions, feel free to stop me and ask any time. Um, so let's just jump right in. Man. Um, I, remind me again, how long have you been in? You're pretty new, right? Yeah, definitely new. Um, two months, I'd say. Yep. Two, two months. months. Okay. Have you worked with any clients yet? No. Potential clients, yes. They're all family members that I am working and bonding a bond in the future, but okay. no, that doesn't like me. Got it. Got it. So when we talk about setting expectations, uh, just let me know. What do you think? What do you think we're really talking about? Um understanding the guidelines that are gonna be set for what you need to do or what they're gonna what they're gonna expect basically with the process. Let them know and understand the process that they're about to um, go on. Okay. So definitely, definitely. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna take it a step further. When you're when we're talking about setting expectations and setting buyer expectations, uh, not only are we talking to them about uh, what the process is and what the process looks like. We need to talk to them about the entire system and we need to talk to them about our time, right? So here's the thing, you're the professional, right? So if you set an appointment with the doctor, when you walk in, you know, they're going to tell you on the phone call first, you know, okay, your, your appointment's tomorrow at 10. When you come in, you're going to have to fill out this paperwork, yada, yada, yada. Well, it's the same thing for us. When we have a client, we need to make sure that we're laying out all of the expectations when they can contact you, when they can't contact you, right? Um, you know, how you do your search process, um, what you look for, all of that. So, um, you know, you gotta, you gotta control the, control the entire conversation and control the transaction. Uh, and I say that because I've seen so many people who they're like, yeah, I've showed this buyer like 30 homes already. They haven't selected any. To me, I'm like, why are you showing 30 houses? That makes, to me, it makes no sense. I was like, I, don't, I typically don't show more than seven properties, um, but on average, I'm really showing like 10. I mean, I'm showing like five, um, and that's it. And I tell my clients up front, this is how the process is going to work, right? You want to save as much time uh, as you can. If you think about spending, you know, 30, 40 hours with every client, looking over 15, 20 properties with every client, it's going to be hard to really get to the closing table because you're always out looking at properties, right? It makes the process a lot easier for you. You save time and you make a lot more money because if, think about it. If you have five clients, they all need to see 20 houses, right? You're, you're, you're doing maybe five houses a day or even 10 houses a day. That's, that's, that's what, four to five, three to four days or so that you're with the client. Well, if you only have to go out one time and look at five properties, now that can be three to five days and you have a different client each and every day if you're doing a search that way or if you're doing showings that way. So you really get to close a lot more. Process is a heck of a lot more simpler. And when you have your full system and process in place, it just works. So that's more so like the why we set the expectations. Um, when we set expectations, first, the very first conversation when you when you first meet with somebody you want to put in their mind you're the professional give you an example I had uh, this morning a lead came in online I, I called them because uh, I do my follow-ups in the morning and uh, introduced myself said hey Madeline this is Jerry with Keller Williams Philadelphia I saw you were taking a look at this property here you wanted to see it as soon as possible um, how, how soon are you looking to looking to do the property they said oh I'd love to see it today I said, Madeline that's awesome you know I'd love to be able to take you out uh, 
to take a look at this property today. I understand you're running. Is that correct? He's like, yeah, yeah. What time can we see? Well, before we get to, you know, seeing it, I have a couple questions I want to ask you, right? And that's where I start going into the details of what exactly are you looking for? Or, you know, are you already pre-approved if you're buying, right? Figure all that information out and let them know, you know, without a pre-approval or without having everything in place, I don't take anyone out to see properties. The reason is our market is extremely fast and I go through that whole spiel there. Right, you let them know that I'm not just setting the expectation that we can't just run out with at any time. Uh, I'm also making sure you understand why. So when you're setting the expectation, you want to make sure they understand why. Uh, and then the pre-qualification, you want to let them know you absolutely need the pre-qualification uh, and 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 uh, pre-approval. Right, let them know. Without that, you're not showing them anything. Um, the confirmation, which is once you you know, once you go through um, the confirmation for the buyer consultation or for that first actual in-person appointment, or I guess today in Zoom, a uh, video appointment, virtual appointment, let them know, right? So I, for you, I would uh, I would say, hey, Alejandro, just give me a quick call. This is Jared from Pella Williams, Philadelphia. I wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, you were still good to go for tomorrow at one o'clock. Does that work for you? And, you know, you say, yeah, that works. It's okay, great. Well, you know, if that works for you tomorrow, I just wanted to remember, remind you that, you know, tomorrow when we meet, we're going to go over everything that you're looking for in a home. I'm going to take down all those notes so I can help you find a better home. Um, we're going to go over the pre-approval to make sure that that fits and aligns with what you're looking for in a property. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to sign our buyer agency agreements, what I like to call our partnership agreements, right? Again, I'm setting expectations to let you know exactly what it is we're going to do in that appointment. And again, letting you know, we're not doing anything until you have these things in place. And right after that, I'm gonna ask you, does all that sound pretty good to you? Yeah, great, so you have that pre-approval that we talked about? Yes, I have it, okay, wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow. Or hey, do you have that pre-approval we talked about? No, no, I don't, I don't have that pre-approval. So, you know, when you, you say, okay, I don't have the pre-approval, then that's why I say, okay, well, hey, let's do this. Before we, before we confirm everything, I'm gonna keep that slot open. Let's get you with um, whatever lender it is you wanna send them to. Let's get you with this lender. Let's try to get that free approval for you ASAP. Like I said before, you know, we don't take anyone out without that. And here's the thing. I don't want you to find a home that's perfect for you and you're not able to get it under contract, even if we make an offer, because you don't have a pre-approval. And believe it or not, the way the properties are moving today without a pre-approval, you know, most, most sellers and most good agents are not going to accept any type of contract for us. Uh, so again, letting them know exactly what it is that's going on. Uh, buyer consultation, you set every expectation you can. Um, I'll, I'll go over some of that stuff with you. I'm going to show you another slide. Of course, when you're in the showing, set the expectations that look, we're looking at a few properties today. You're going to choose from one of these properties. One of these properties is going to be your next home because you decided these were the properties that you wanted to see. And then when you're under contract, you're setting the expectation that they're going to give you a good review and they're going to refer people to you. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. Um, so let me come back for just a second. Boom, stop broadcast. All right. So it's pretty, uh, it's, it's funny that we even have to really go through this and teach this class, but you'd be surprised. You know, a lot of people, especially when they're new, they're hopping in a, um, you know, they're getting a call and somebody's like, hey, I just saw this property online. And they're like, great. Let's go take a look. They run out to the house. They're meeting somebody. This person has not been pre-approved. Like, and then you start talking to them and you realize their credit is trash. You know, they have no money saved. They literally just cannot purchase a property. If you go through these conversations early on and set the expectations that, hey, look, we, I want to help you as best as possible. However, and these are the steps that we have to do in order for me to be able to fully help you. It makes a heck of a lot more sense. Right? Um, you know, what are, what are some of the things you think you'd run into when it comes to setting expectations, whether problems or whatever? Really? Going back to the uh, buy expectations, um, with the pre-qualification, um, how would you think um, not to lose one of your clients by getting them pre-qualified? So you let them know that you need to get your pre-approval. Well, yeah. you don't want to let them down and lose that potential client. What's a good way to speak to them or talk to them? 
for the counter of that situation and not lose that client by telling him off, basically. Yeah. So basically what you're saying is, uh, I just want to make sure I understand, yeah. how do you, you know, a client that you've already told they got to get the pre-approval and they still try to hold the appointment or whatever without getting it, how yeah. do you um, not lose that client? Yes. Okay. So there's two things. One, not every client is perfect for you to work with, right? If you have a client or a potential client that is not willing to follow the instructions or rules and understand that you're the expert and you're doing this to help them, that's probably going to be a very difficult and painful transaction. It's probably going to cost you a lot of time, which in turn, a lot of money um, may not necessarily be the person that you want to keep. Right? Not every client is the best client. I have a client right now, and honestly, I, I told them, and I told them this. I said, the only reason I'm working with you right now is because I know you and your family really well. <laughs> I told them that. And I, I told him, I said, look, the way you, know, you, your wife, like he's fine, but his wife and his wife's mother, mm. absolutely horrible. Absolutely horrible. They question everything. They don't do anything on time, and then they want to get upset. And I'm like, right. I sent you a document to sign three days ago. You've called everybody else to verify, and you still haven't signed it yet. I was like, if it wasn't for literally me growing up with this dude, <laughs> I wouldn't be helping him out. So, um, if, and again, if it wasn't for him, I'd, I'd just pass it off. It'd be a referral. I don't have a problem with sending referrals to other people and letting them know. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a real estate professional. Unfortunately, I'm not able to run out all the time. I want to make sure that this process is the best process for you. So what I do is I just explain to people why we do the things we do. So for instance, they say, well, you know, I'd really like to meet with you tomorrow. You know, here's the thing. We can meet tomorrow, but I can't really start looking for properties for you until I know exactly what it is that you're able to purchase. You know, I'd hate to start sending you properties or to set up showings for us that are at, you know, 250 or $300,000 and you know, you have a pre-approval that comes up for 200000 Because now what's going to happen is you're going to start falling in love with these properties that you're going to be unable to purchase, right? Now, you don't have to tell them and be all harsh. I'm just a very straightforward person, so that's how I am. Uh, but you can say it this way. Here's the thing. I just want to let you know, uh, or I want to make sure that whenever we start searching properties, we're searching for the best properties for you. I want to make sure that I don't put any financial strain or anything or look for anything outside of your scope. So by getting this pre-approval first, what we're able to do is determine the range of properties that we're going to be able to search. That could change the neighborhoods because of taxes, or it could just change the style of the home. It could change uh, the condition of the home because of the location and neighborhood that's in. So you explain that to them, and they should come back and say, "Okay, you know what? I, I completely understand that. I hate to, you know, I don't, I don't really need to take a look at properties if I can't get it, right?" And then if they say, well, I don't understand, you know, exactly why that matters. That's when you move into the next conversation, which is, uh, you know, Alejandro, what will happen is if I show you properties today that you fall in love with and we go to make an offer without a pre-approval, the seller's not going to accept it. They're going to want to make sure that you're able to purchase this property before taking their home off the market because they don't want to lose out on other property, on other offers, right? So because of that, I need to have this document first. If we don't have this document, then, you know, it's, it's really just us going out and having fun. And believe me, I love to have fun, but at the same time, I want to have fun while helping you, not taking you away from your job or away from your family or anything like that. Do you, do you get that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That right there, that's the script that I use. And then I use that, I use that with clients. And at this, and after every script, you always ask, does that make sense? Do you understand that? Do you get like after every single time, just to make sure they really understand it. Um, and then you ask, do you have any other questions? Right. And they say, uh, no, I don't really have any other questions. Then great. Ron, I saw you snuck in here. How's it going? <laughs> um, then great. You know, but it's all about setting the expectation and letting them know I'm the real estate professional. I have, um, yeah, this, this is the worst. You know, I love helping other agents, right? So because I love helping other agents, uh, let's say, let's say since Ron's not in here, we'll put him on the spot. Let's say Ron is uh, heading out to vaca on vacation. 
and he calls me saying, hey, Jerry, I have some clients coming in. They want to take a look at a couple properties on Thursday. I'm not going to be back until Saturday. Can you help me out? Hey, Ron, no problem. Yep. So I'm going to ask Ron, do you have everything? I didn't do that in the past. I didn't, I didn't always ask the agent, do you have everything? But the reason I do that now is because I've had agents who literally have just sent me out with their clients to see properties and they were not pre-qualified. They weren't ready to purchase, you know? And I'm like, yo, I could, I could, I could be home cooking. You know, I could be on a grill right now. This is summer. I could be on a grill, you know, yep. smoking me a nice brisket. And instead I'm out here running around your clients who are not prepared. But imagine if every single agent set the expectation up front that, when you see properties, you are going to uh, purchase, right? So I want to share, um, I want to share this with y'all as well because this is this is probably one of my favorite. Um, let me let me try to get out of this. I'm trying to figure out how to close my other uh, other screen here. All right, there we go. Close setting buyer expectations. There's so many, boom, buyer presentation. All right. So I'm going to share my screen here. And can you all see the home buying guide? Yes. Awesome. So I'm going to skip through this because there's one part that I really want to, I want to show you. It's the property search. Now, this is how I said, well, let's go back. The consultation. Um, when I'm talking to my clients and I'm letting them know what's happening with the rest of the process, this is where it really all starts. I have them fill out a future client questionnaire. Um, after the future client questionnaire, I review the financing. I determine their motivation. So, Ron, I'll say, you know, Ron, what is it about you? Uh, what is it that really makes you want to purchase a home? What, what motivates you to, to find this new home for you? And... Uh, Go ahead and go ahead and let me know what it is. Um, well, I'm looking to improve for my family and I want to, you know, get them in a better situation. Okay. Um, Ron, what exactly does a better situation look like? Do you have children? I do. Got so, it. so, you, you know, uh, in a, in a, in a more, in a development where there's, you know, other, maybe other families where they can intera interact with everybody else. And, uh, you know, maybe, with a little bit of property as well, so I can, you know, have them, okay. you know. Got it. So what you so what it sounds like you're telling me is you you want to put your fam yourself, your family in a position, especially your children in a position to be able to succeed, um, you know, a little bit more in the future, whether that's with a, 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 a safer environment, a better school district, or even just a way for them to grow their inter interpersonal skills. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Got it. Got it. That makes, that makes all the sense there. And I definitely commend you. Now, I understand exactly where it is that you want to go. That's I understand your dream, your goal now. Um, sounds like the reason you're looking is because you're not there just yet. Is that correct? That is correct. Got it. And if we're not able to help you find this home, and if you don't pull the trigger on, on finding the home and, and placing an offer on that home, then you'll still be in the same position. Probably. Yep. So, so what we need to do is we need to make sure that we get you in uh, the best situation possible, not just for yourself, but through purchasing this home to help your family. And believe me, Ron, not only do I want to help you find a home, I want to help you find, uh, find the perfect, perfect, perfect atmosphere for your, for your, for your children. Uh, you know, I understand, you know, my parents did the same thing for me and it's super important. And hopefully when I have children, I'll be able to do the same thing for them. Um, so really quickly, what I just did was, um, we went through something that's called a, uh, positive present, negative present, negative future, positive future. You want to walk through all of those things with your client when setting the expectations, because now you're putting in their mindset, you have to find a home. You have to purchase a home. If you don't purchase a home and if it doesn't meet the criteria that you're going to tell me, you have to, uh, you have to have, then you're not really achieving the goals that you have for you or for your family. So you go ahead and you start putting them in that mindset within the consultation. 
and then you let them know at the end, look, by working with me, I promise you, I'm going to do everything that I can do to help you put yourself and your family in the best uh, position ever, right? You just leave it there. You determine the budget, go through the criteria, you sign the documents. Now, the property search. This is where it gets fun. You want to talk about setting expectations? I tell my clients, hey, you know what? Here's the thing. You gave me a list already of everything that it is that you're, the top five things you're looking for in your neighborhood, top five things you'd love to have in your neighborhood, top five things that you absolutely have to have in your home, and the top five things that you would like to have but aren't necessarily a deal breaker in your home. I just want to go over these and make sure these are all correct. We'll go through that list. And then I'll say, I'll say, hey, Alejandro or Ron, here's the thing. Um, I know that you're probably going to be online looking at properties all the time. And you're probably looking at these with your family, um, you know, or you have other people sending you pictures. But here's the thing. You're looking at the pictures. The reason that this process works and the reason that we're able to get you into a home within five days of us having this meeting right here and doing this consultation is because I'm not just going to look at pretty kitchens and bathrooms for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start a home search today and I'm going to go through every property that matches this criteria. I'm going to select upwards of 20 properties and it could be less, but up to 20 properties that absolutely match everything, which means not only is it going to be a three bedroom, two bath property, um, that's, you know, 1200 to 1500 square feet. Not only is it going to have a front yard for you, but I'm also going to make sure that it's within that five minute drive time that you asked for, um, to the nearest grocery store. I'm also going to make sure that you know, it's along the bus route that you asked for that your children have because your children have to hop on the bus in the morning. I'm going to take and map all these things out to make sure that you're seeing the absolute best properties. From there, I'm going to send you that list and ask you to narrow that list of 20 properties down to five. What you're doing is you're telling me that these are the five absolute best properties on the market. These are the five properties that match your criteria more than anything else. Once you send those properties back, which I, I would love to have those back within the next uh, you know, 48 to 72 hours, I'm gonna schedule for within 24 hours. We're gonna go out, we're gonna take a look at anywhere between three to five properties that you send me. And then in every single home, it's not because I wanna push you, but in every home, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask you, will you buy this house? The reason I'm asking you this is because if you say yes, I'll go ahead and call the agent and let them know that we're interested and we may be placing an offer. If you say no, I'm going to ask you why. Because if you tell me that there's something about this home that you don't like, whether it's a kitchen or a bathroom or the layout, I'm going to compare it to the next homes that we're supposed to see. Let's just say this is a first home. You tell me, no, you don't like it. And there's two other properties or five other properties we're supposed to look at. And two of those properties are on the same layout or have exactly what it is you didn't like about this home. Then we won't go see them. There's no reason for me to waste your time to show you something that you've already determined you don't like. After we finish looking at all those properties, whether it's three or five, I'm going to say, hey, look, which one of these houses will you, will you be moving into in the next 30, or 40, next 30 or 40 days? So that is how I submit, um, or not, not necessarily submit an offer, but that is how I go through setting the expectation and only working with a client for five days. I meet them. I set the appointment. After that, I uh, do the uh, confirmation call to confirm the appointment the day before. We have the consultation. After the consultation, I immediately will start to search. After I do the search, I send it out to them. I let them select the properties that they wanna look at from what I've already seen. And we go out in the property and I say, hey, these are the, these are the properties you told me you like, which means one of these properties are the properties that you're going to decide you want to be in. And when you put that back on them saying these are properties that you selected, it's kind of hard for them to say anything else after that. Uh, the entire time, you're setting expectation on how quickly they're removed. Also, we make a lot of money in this business from referrals, right? So we have something that I use. It's called a promise script. And with me, it's, you know, hey, Ron. Um, you know, thank you very much for, for choosing to work with myself and the Jay Wells team. You know, I promise that I'm going to deliver the best service, and the, the best quality I absolutely can to you. Uh, with the Jay Wells team, as you can see on the logo, it's, it's not just your typical real estate team. We love to come with a white glove approach to real estate. So I'm going to treat you like 
you would see the, the, the athletes being treated by their million dollar agents, right? You're going to get that service. You're going to get that treatment. Now, here's the thing. Because I promise that I'm going to give you the best experience you'll ever have, you're probably going to want to brag about it. I ask that, hey, if you have a couple friends or family members that are out there that's looking to purchase, you know, if you could just do me one great favor and send me the referral. If you can just send me their contact information so I can call them, go ahead and tell them that I'll, get, I'll be getting ready to call them and I'll reach out to them. I would love to just introduce myself to them. And I do this in the buyer consultation, right? I do this in the buyer consultation. The other thing that I say is, and this is really funny and it gets a lot of people that like, why the heck would you do that? Other thing, hey Ron, and one more thing before we head out. You know, if you don't know too many people, but you still want to help me advertise just a little bit, and I understand you're buying this home, I have a sign that looks just like a for sale sign, except it doesn't say for sale. Though. What I love to do is maybe for 30 days after you move in, if you would allow me to have that uh, sign outside in your front yard, and then if anybody asks you if this house is for sale, just let them know. No, it's not for sale. What it is is I really just enjoy working with this guy so much that I wanted to share his information with everybody else around me. And if people call me and ask me about your house, I promise I won't let people see your home or anything. I'm just going to let them know. Hey, my guy, Ryan, he just loved working with me and asked if he could share my information. So we put a sign in this yard so he could share the information. He loved working with me. Hey, I'm sure he, he thinks everybody else would love working with me as well. Putting in their mindset that you're going to do everything for them. Yeah. So it's just a generic sign, no for sale sign or anything like that, right? It's everything that would be on a for sale sign. Actually, it's what you see right here behind me. It's pretty much this. It says Kelly Williams. It looks like a for sale sign, but it doesn't have the words for sale. Right. Okay. Yep. So we put that out there. And here's the thing. You're probably going to get a lot of calls on that property as an agent. Right. So what it looks at, what it looks like is you answer your phone. Hey, this is Jerry with Kelly Williams. How can I help you? And they say, Hey, you know what? I was just driving by your property at 1619 Walnut Street. Wanted to know, um, you know, if, if I could see it. Oh my gosh. You know what? Uh, <laughs> the, here's the thing. That home is actually no longer for sale. Uh, but I'd, I'd love to help you out. And well, what do you, what do you mean that property is not for sale? Well, what I mean is um, I actually just sold that house to uh, one of my clients and you know, they wanted to share all my information. Um, but the thing is they didn't have anybody that they knew that were interested in either buying or selling a home right now. So they put my sign in their yard to share their information with everybody that's driving by or walking by because they just love the experience of working with me. Now, I'd love to be able to give you that same experience if you have any questions about buying or selling right now. And that's it. You go from there and well, it's, it's yeah. not false advertisement then. It's not false advertisement. There's nothing for sale there. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, that's so all of my for sale signs don't have for sale on them. I have the riders that I can hook to it afterwards that say for sale. Yeah, I, I just received new signs and they didn't come through. I'm saying, why doesn't it have for sale on it? But yep, that is to me, that's the best. Absolutely. So, it's, it sounds yeah. like a, I love that plan. And I, and I like your analogy of the instead of a buyer agency contract, call it a, a partnership. I like that. It's a partnership agreement. Uh, yep. Yep. Um, I love the partnership agreement because, again, yes. we're talking about setting expectations. What it is is, I'm letting you know that we are working together in this process, right? It's not all me. We're working together. So, Ron, if I'm giving you a call and say, hey, Ron, I'm sending over a couple properties to you. Um, I'd love for you to take a look at them and get them back to me as soon as possible. That's what a lot of people will say. I'm going to say, hey, Ron, here's the thing. I found some properties that I think you would love, um, you know, just going off of the information that you gave me. Remember, we're working together here. So um, I'd love for you to take a look at these properties. And then if you could, get them back to me within the next 24 hours. Right. Again, okay. as soon as possible, like for you, Ron, you might think you're busy. You know, you might, you might have, um, you know, some, some chicken to marinate and some corn to, to throw in some salt and sugar water to grill. And, you know, you might have to fill up the pool, um, and, and get everything together for the family. So y'all can enjoy the weekend or, or pack up some camping stuff. And to you, you're like, Hey, I'm busy. I don't have time to look at these properties, but what's more important us working together to help you find the home and you getting it back to me within 24 hours to make sure you don't lose on that home or me saying, Hey, get it back to me as soon as possible. Because as soon as possible to you might not be until Saturday. 
And I don't know if you've ever sent this out before, but you send a list of seven properties to a client. They don't look at it for a couple of days. And wow. then they say, well, you, you sent me seven properties, but like four of them are under contract. Yeah, because I sent those to you three days ago and our market is moving quickly. One of the yeah. phrases I like to use is this, if, if you go home and sleep on it, you won't be sleeping in it. I like it. I like yeah. it. Exactly. I, I, so, you know, you got to make a decision. You got to make a decision yesterday. So. And here's the thing. When you, um, you know, if the way that I send these properties out, when I say I'm going to send you the best 20, right, I'm letting them know. These are the top 20 properties that match your criteria and what you told me that you're looking for on the market. I want you to select what you believe are the top five of these three properties. These are the five properties that you're telling me that you would be able to move into or that you would, you could see yourself living in for the next how many years, right? Again, that's all on them. So now when you're in the house and you're saying, is this the house that you live in? Well, one, you already know the answer is yes, right? It is because they told you that by sending it back to you. And then two, well, hey, let's go ahead and move forward. We want to make sure you get this house, right? We want to make sure no one else gets this house. And that's where what Ronnie says comes in handy. Look, you go home and sleep in it, sleep on it, and that's fine. We'll be looking for something for you to sleep in again. Or you can go ahead and, and submit this offer. Um, and then also what, what I think works a little bit is um, – you know, I'll send, I'll send it. Like I, like I said, I'll send a text message to the other client or the other agent. Uh, and I'll do that in front of my client. Right. I do it. Cause what, it, what happens is now they're still seeing me send a message to an agent saying my client has interest in your home. I'll be getting in contact with you soon. In their mind, they're saying, well, yeah, we're going to have to make a decision because he already told the agent we were going to be talking to them. Right. Some of the expectations we set, are going to be super upfront and blunt. Some of the expectations we set are going to be subliminal as heck. But the thing is, we have to constantly set these expectations. I have um, uh, a set of clients that was really funny. Um, we did uh, we did House Hunters uh, last year together. And when they purchased their home, it was funny because in their interview, they were like, we weren't expecting to buy a house. And they weren't. We had a consultation, and in the consultation, I told them they were buying a house. I set the expectation that you're buying a second house. And guess what happened? In four days, they were under contract on another home. And then they bought the house, and they were like, how the hell did we end up in another house? <laughs> I was like, well, that's, that's my job. That's what I do. I tell you what we're going to do. You agree to it, and then we do it together. We looked at houses together right? <laughs> we signed contracts together. And then we took pictures and clothes on a property together. I helped you move in all that stuff, right? It's a partnership. It's fun. You know, we create the friendships, but we set the expectations up front. Uh, now, if there's anything that you have with your particular, um, you know, your particular uh, business or your system, I'd love to hear about it. Ron, how long have you been in real estate? Um, I've been in for eight years now. Eight years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, are you new to KW? I am. I just moved. Last month, I just came over from uh, okay. Long and Foster. Long and Foster. All right. Which one? Uh, the one in Collegeville. Okay. So, did you come over with um, Patty with Tabor Kevin? and when Kim, yeah, Dawn come out with their team? Got it. Awesome. Awesome. I was just out in Collegeville not too long ago. Um, didn't put a property under contract in Collegeville, but we did do one in Hatfield and just got one under North Wales. Uh, okay. I love, love the area. Um, love the area. Yeah, so, it is nice up here. Yeah. Um, I like it. Do you know, do you know Michael O'Brien by chance? Michael O'Brien. No, the name's not familiar. No, he's a long and foster guy. He's a long and foster guy. He's more so in the Philly area, okay. but I know he's done some stuff out there. So, right. um, so tell me, over the last eight years for you, what are some challenges that you've run into because of um, either not setting expectations or um, what are some issues you come up with when trying to set expectations? Well, when you first started your conversation, I remember being new. I would rush out, 
hey, can we go see this property? Sure, let's go. <laughs> and boy, what a mistake that was. <laughs> <laughs> you, you live and learn by your mistakes. So, yep. you know, now I tell them, I uh, just got off the phone prior to this, uh, the Zoom call, I was on the phone with a, an agent who called on one of my listings and she says, uh, yeah, I'd love to see the property. I says, well, let me ask you a few questions. Like you said, I says, uh, the first process is to get pre-approved. Oh, uh, oh, okay. So, uh, <laughs> story short, you know, I put her in touch with the lender and I says, listen, feel free to reach out to somebody you may know or, you know, your bank to get a second opinion. And uh, that's where we're at. So. Yeah. It, it, it's a, every every deal is like a, a challenge it's everything's different so you know it's, it's, and here's like the thing you, say, you set the expectations ahead of up front and you know i have so, uh i'm, I'm going to show you if i can pull them up and get you to see them uh well it looks like i'm teaching another class at 215 now <laughs> uh sure um uh, all right that's tori so you'll realize that, um, you know, the closer you get to people in leadership at the office, the more you will be doing. Responsibilities. Um, yeah. Yep. So <laughs> uh, this, this is Tori. Can you show, can you teach at 215? Sure can. Great. Which class is it? You know, but it's, it's 100%, 100% great. I want to see if I can pull up these text messages from a, it's not a client. Uh, he's a customer at the moment. Um, he was asking me about properties last week and trying to find it because he's been asking me about properties for I don't know how long. Uh, sorry, guys. I get, I get a lot of text messages. Um, I can't, can't find it. Maybe I should type his name in. So the thing is, he sends me properties and sometimes the same properties all the time the same ones. Uh, <laughs> sometimes the same ones yep all right here it is this is fun so he calls me he says he says good morning bro how's it going uh, you know can you give me a call absolutely i'll give you a call after 11 when i'm done with my um when i'm done with the the business so but i also here's something else i tell people that you know when I'm working for you, I'm typically really working for you, helping you find the properties that you're looking for if you're selling. I'm helping you sell your properties between the time, between the hours of 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. During that time is when I'm really doing what we call lead generation in our business. So if I'm selling a property, I'm looking for everyone that may be interested in purchasing from you. And if I'm looking for properties for you to purchase, that's the time that I'm really sitting down and making sh and, and matching everything up. At 11 a.m., I'll typically do uh, my lunch break because I do wake up every day at five and then I start my meetings at one o'clock and I let people know, I let people know that. And look, when they call, you call me and ask me to set an appointment. Yeah, no problem. Um, are you good on Thursday at one or three? That's the two times of the day that I'm going to set an appointment one o'clock or three o'clock. Now, if you want to do two o'clock, am I going to say no? Mm, it depends. If I have something at one o'clock, I might, um, but typically, I'm probably not going to say no. It's just I'm going to I'm going to say to you, hey Ron, you know what? Um, here's the thing: I can do two, but if we do two, I do have another appointment follow uh, right after that that I need to prepare for. So, um, are you sure one o'clock doesn't work for you? Mm -hmm. Right? You smile with it, or you shake your head the entire time. Are you sure that one o'clock doesn't work for you? You know, sales tactic: always shake your head yes. It puts in that person's mind to say yes. So when you ask them a question, it's typically going to say yes, or you ask them a series of questions. Um, where, you know, you know, they're going to say yes to the first two or three. And then the last one is a real question you want them to say yes to. Mm -hmm. They've said yes two or three times already. So now when you get to the last one, it's already programmed for them to say yes. So you do that. And again, I'm still shaking my head. And now both of you are shaking your head. Yeah. Great, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm really appreciating your Jedi mind tricks. I'm, I'm learning a lot. <laughs> hey, man, I, I've been in sales since I was seven. Eight. Wow. I, I started I started in sales literally at seven or eight years old um, whether it was selling candy or things like that I couldn't leave my block when I sold candy for school so what I would do is I would sell everything um, once I would go back home and look at what people sold 
or what people, what people purchased. And then I would go right back to the same, same houses. And this was at seven years old, go back oh. to the same houses and say, you know, Hey Ryan, thanks so much for buying. Um, you know, I saw that you had bought this here and I have some other stuff that they suggested that you might want to go with it. Do you like any of this? I would go to the same house three times. Well, <laughs> I couldn't leave the block. I had to figure out something. So <laughs> let me get back to this. So now that was on, that was on June 8th. Um, he contacted me again on June 19th because I told him to get with the lender and I spoke with the lender. He never spoke with the lender. Um, I texted him, Hey, just wanted to check and see how everything was going. Right. That was on, um, June 19th. He called me then June 22nd. He said, Hey, good morning. Uh, this is after we had already talked about the property on the phone. I said, Hey, good morning. How's it going? Could you give me a call when you get a chance? I want to get this spot before it leaves the market. I said, Hey, I can give you a call around 1130 if that works for you. Now this is a friend of mine. He said, yeah, that works. Great. Then, um, on that call, I remember I told him, go talk to the cop. Who's a lender, right? I'm not showing you anything until you talk to the lender. June 25th. Hey, good morning. Just wanted to see if you had any updates. Talked to Kyle. He said y'all were supposed to be um, speaking again to get the pre-approval. Now, I called Kyle myself, and he said, I told him he has to show more money in order to be able to purchase. And I talked to his business partner. His business partner says he has the money, but he hasn't shown anything. So he's supposed to be getting documents to. Okay, great. Friday. Hey, good morning. Reaching out to see what's going on. The property dropped to one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. Now, my text. I can't pull any trigger until you have a pre-approval. Question. So I need to reach out to Kyle. Yes, I know y'all spoke. <laughs> I know y'all spoke. He reached out to you. Um, I just need to make sure we had the pre-approval with everything. He said, "Okay, I'm going to reach out to both of you guys." Got it. He's the one that has to run the financing. I can I can advise you with making the purchase. That was on Friday. Talked to Kyle again on Saturday because we talk almost, we talk all the time. Still no pre-approval there because he hasn't gotten his bank statements and stuff together. Now, this has been going on right here. Just this one property since June 8th. Guess what? Remember you said some buyers aren't worth working with? <laughs> exactly. And here's the thing. I'm not working with him. Right. He can text me all the he's, he's not following your instructions. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and and it, after a while, they'll come around and realize after they miss out on a couple properties or if they try to go with somebody else and realize they have a, they're having a horrible experience. That's fine. You know how many people like I've had people come back to me afterwards and say, oh, my gosh, I wish I would work with you. Next time I'm going to work with you. Um, now, here's the thing. I'm not going to try to take any of your clients. But if you do call me and ask me to work with your clients. I'm going to provide them with the same treatment that I always provide my clients. If you're not providing your clients with that same treatment or better, be prepared for them to come back and say, Hey, I really enjoyed working with Jerry. Is there any way we can make a switch? I've had that happen several times and I'll pay a referral off of it. I will do that because I feel bad. You went ahead and, you know, search for the properties and stuff, but it happens. I did one this past Saturday. Um, and the clients asked me, they said, I said, hey, um, you know, so when this is done, are we going to be working with so-and-so or are we going to be moving forward with you? I said, oh, well, you know, they're out of town. I was just uh, showing the properties for them. Um, you know, I'll be more than happy to give them all the feedback so you don't have to worry about getting back uh, with them on these particular properties. But once they get back in town, everything will be moving forward with them. They said, oh, well, we, we really like working with you. Is there any way we can work with you? And I told them, that's the, that's the conversation you have to have with your, with your agent. I'm, I'm not trying to take anybody's plan. However, I'm going to provide the service to make people want to work with me and to make them want to put a sign in their front yard after they buy a house. Who puts a, who puts a sign in the yard when they buy a house, right? It's crazy. Um, but there is a Hicks, Mike Hicks. He's a KW agent out of Tennessee, I believe it is. Um, he's the one that I actually stole that promise script from, and I, I changed it a little bit. Um, but if you look up my kicks on YouTube, uh, you can find the promise script and I think I have a copy of it in one of my other classes. I'll look at, look for it and, and send that out. Um, the other, the other thing is like the sign in the yard. I got that from, um, who did I get that from? It's another multi-million dollar agent. And what I mean by that is they're making multiples, multiple millions a year. Um, from real estate as a nice large team. Uh, but that's something that he did. But 
I have my systems in place, and when I find something else that I think works, I adopt, I adopt it. So I, I recommend the same thing when y'all are taking these classes. Figure out who you are as a salesperson. Figure out who you are as a person and make sure those two things, you know, work together very well. Because if you have to be a salesperson in front of people and then you're not being yourself, people can kind of get that sense that, oh, this person is just trying to sell me something or it's kind of fake. You just want to be yourself. I walk into a house with clients. I don't show them around the house. I walk into a house. I said, go ahead and walk through. Let me know what you think. I'm going to take a walk through as well. I'm going to do a little mini inspection to make sure that, um, you know, the house is sound. It looks good. And if there's anything that, 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 you know, is a concern, I'll bring it up to you. But I want you to get the feel of this home yourself, you know? And I like to do that. Um, aren't you supposed to be with them, though, as you walk through the house? Not necessarily. No? I mean, only nope. for, well, especially for someone you don't know that you're not, you know, a new a new client that you're not familiar with? I mean, to protect so, your, the value of, you know, you, you don't know them from from John, you know, I mean, they could be out there pilfer. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. I mean, yeah, no, no. I, I get I get what you're saying as well. 100%. For liability purposes, you want to be with them. Exactly. Yeah, no, I, I get that 100%. Um, I think if you do your consultation the right way, you're going to learn a lot about this person. That's um, true. I guess if you put, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's really a lot of effort because when I'm doing my consultation, remember, I'm going through I'm going through so much. Like, it's not just a financial thing and what you want in the house. Like, I'm going through, I will, here, let me pull this up. Um, I'm just going to pause for a second, and I'm going to show you a document that I use. Um, and this goes to all of my clients. All right. Here we go. Zoom, share screen. All right, so you should all be able to see this, correct? Yes. All right, so again, remember, so set expectations and be subliminal sometimes. My future client questionnaire, I send this out before we even do our consultation, and we'll go over this within the consultation. Future client questionnaire. One is called future client questionnaire, telling them they're working with you. Next, thank you for trusting me to be your realtor. We haven't signed anything yet, but thanks. Uh, below are a few questions that I've found are most important when assisting you in finding the perfect home in my experience, being able to determine what matters uh, most to you aside from the home itself allows me to help you increase the level of comfort and satisfaction in the total process from the home search to uh, your in-home living experience. I can change that. I think this is the old one, but um, I get their information, name, phone, email, birth date, hobby. That way, when it comes to closing gifts, I'm not giving them just a bottle of wine. It's something that matters. On a scale of one to 10, one being not very important, 10 being extremely important, how important is it that you move from your current home or apartment? Are you pre-approved? If so, what's your pre-approval amount? What is your reason for leaving? What will change when you move? What is your deadline? Are you looking for your dream home or transitional home? Then I go through, list things that list five things that must be true about your next neighborhood. List five things you would like about your next neighborhood. List five things that must be true about your next home. List five things you would like about your home. What styles of home do you uh, like the most? Do you have any pets? If so, describe them. Um, please list anything else that's important to you, uh, that you believe is important for me to know. Now, can you share that about, with us? Do we? Yeah, can I can we share get a that. copy you, of that. Yeah, go ahead and put your uh, put your info, or if you want, you see my info right here. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead and send me a text with your email address in it as well. Uh, if you can see it, two five four. Four nine five four zero one eight, and I'll, I'll I'll send you a copy of that. Yep. Now here I'm learning a lot about this person because not only am I able to figure out what kind of house they want, I'm learning about what they're looking for in the neighborhood, why those things matter to them. Right. I'm getting their motivation again, and then I'm going to dig deeper in the actual consultation itself. So I'm learning a lot, and then you know I ask I tell people you know this consultation this conversation is a time where we're gonna find out if, um, you know, if, if we're going to work together. And I let people know, not, at, I have a client right now that I'm taking out. Uh, her budget's 1.1 million. Great, right? I knew her budget before we had our consultation. However, in the consultation, I said, you know, um, now before we head out, I wanna ask, you know, are you, are you ready to go, go ahead and move forward and sign a uh, partnership agreements with me today? 
And she's like, yeah, absolutely. Why wouldn't I? And I said, you know, just to be completely honest with you, I, I, I ask this to everybody because, you know, there's some people you may meet and they may not necessarily be the right partner for you. I like to make sure that, um, you know, we're comfortable with working with each other. Now, this is a $1.1 million client that I could have potentially lost. Yes. However, after the consultation, the way I do it, and I told you, the screens, the, the slides that I'm showing you, I also sold to my clients. So that buyer presentation, when they, I actually show them that slideshow, right? So they, they not only hear me say, I'm sending you 20 houses, you're picking five, and we're going to walk through them, and then you're going to choose a house, they're looking at it. They're going to, all of that, right? So for me, I feel as though I know my clients pretty well when we go out. And if I ever feel like I'm uncomfortable with working with somebody, I let them know. And then if I have to go into a property um, and walk around with somebody, I will. Uh, but I'm also probably not going to be in every room with them. If they go upstairs, I'll go upstairs with them. Um, but I, I want them to feel comfortable with the home, right? And then I want them to sometimes without you being there, it's a little bit harder. Um, got it. It's a little bit harder. Um, for them to start saying, you know what, I can put my bed right here or change it around this way, or you know, if I put the couch here, that when people have that conversation, that's thumbs up. You want to you want them to walk out of a house thinking where their furniture is going. Because that means they're already putting themselves into that home. Yeah. Um, really quickly, if anybody ever has any uh, issues with getting someone to sign a buyer agency agreement, or like I said, the partnership documentation. I wanna read through this really quickly. It's super, super simple. Um, but this is the confirmation call that I said earlier. Um, and I wrote it out here, but it just says, hi, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, this is Jerry from Keller Williams, Philadelphia. I won't take up too much of your time. I just wanted to confirm our appointment for tomorrow at 1 p.m. Were you able to get your pre-approval letter from whomever the lender is? Were you able to get your pre-approval letter from Garden State Home Loans? Great. So quickly, uh, when we meet tomorrow, we will discuss what's important about you uh, moving into your home. I didn't type this part out. It's whatever you say you're going to do. Um, and then the last thing we will do is sign the par partnership documents. Do you have any questions? Great. I'll see you tomorrow at 1 p.m. Right. It's whatever you whatever you plan to do in your um, your consultation. Let them know, and she let them. And then right afterwards, to say, hey. Once we do that, the last, the very last thing we're going to do is sign the partnership agreements, and that's it. And then, if you really want to have fun, you walk in, you walk into the uh, meeting just like this, with whatever you have. You have your documents in your hand. I don't know if you can see it because of the background, right? You sit them down at the table. You sit it down with a pen. Then you sit down. Hey, Ron. Thanks so much for joining me today. Um, so I'm looking so forward to getting into this. Um, that's when you grab you grab the uh, documents you have and you slide them away from you, right? As you slide them away, they're going to look at it. You focus on them and say, hey, you know, don't worry about these right now. I want to make sure that uh, you have my undivided attention as we go through figuring out everything that's important for you with this move, your motivation, and what it is you need in your neighborhood, in your home. Like I, like I sent you before in a future client uh, questionnaire. After we get through that, then we're actually gonna go ahead and sign the partnership agreements. That's what these are right here. The entire time, again, just ex more expectations being set. And they're seeing it, they're like, okay, well that's what I'm signing when I'm done. Pin on top of it. I'm signing that when we're done, right? You done told them like 15 times they're signing from the very first time that you spoke until then. So, yep, any questions? No. Hey, thanks Yo. for sharing your time, your knowledge. Appreciate it. Hey, y'all, you know? you're welcome. You yeah. are welcome. Hopefully, I get to see you all in the office soon. Um, you know, I, I can't wait to, for that. Um, Ron, I hope, hope y'all are killing it out there. Montgomery County, Bus County is crazy right now. It's, oh, it's almost, it's, it's ridiculously, it's ridiculous how quick properties are selling, even at and, the $1 million range. Right, and you have to go over asking. I mean... I did yep. an escalation clause over asking and I still lost. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, I did. Let me show you one of a fellow former agent posted. There was a house last weekend. There was 67 showings on the wall, 
17 over 17 offers on the property. She went $30,000 over asking and did not get the property. <laughs> what property was that? If you don't mind. Uh, you know what? She didn't, she didn't um, yes, divulge that information. Okay. But uh, you know, I need to ask her because that's, that's the question everybody's asking me. But wow, I have, I, it's crazy. The market I is absolutely crazy bedroom, right now. My one bedroom, the other, uh, I don't know if y'all saw that, like, here in Society Hills, small one bedroom property. We didn't go that far over. We went $12,500 over from an escalation clause. Um, but those offers came within the first day, two days. Right. Yeah. I had my first offer on that property 24 hours before it went active. Did you have a coming soon? Always. Yeah. Always. So I don't think you were in my class that I did for um, listings, um, how to sell a listing in 30 days or less. Uh, next time. Really quickly. Yeah. <laughs> dude, next time. Dude, here it is. List the property on as coming soon on Monday. Don't do anything else. Don't allow anyone to show it. Make it active on Saturday. And on that Saturday, host an open house so it's not active until the open house. Mm. Get are we allowed to do open houses? Are we, are, we, are we back to doing open houses? <laughs> Uh, not really. It's by appointment only. So you can do the virtual open house, however. Okay. Okay. But when you make it active during that time, even if you make it active for that first Saturday, and here's where you can cheat a little bit, that first Saturday that is active, it's only eligible for showings for maybe three or four hours, right? Wow. Get, if you do that, everyone sees each other at the same time. Oh, I know. Then you, yeah. I do that. Then you, mm -hmm. then you send out the email and say, hey, thanks so much for showing the property. Um, as you as you saw, there were quite a few showings for today. Uh, you know, uh, we're looking forward to your offer. I uh, will be uh, reviewing some offers on Monday. Within gotcha. two to three days now, it's there. My average days on the market is six. Six. Yeah. Uh, I use that that's same process many. for every property. That's well, six that's, too many. <laughs> well, here's the, thing, here's the thing about it. You know, I like to wait. And we typically go, um, we typically get multiple offers. Oh, absolutely. So, That's what you look yeah. forward to. So you, so you leave it there. I'm, I'm fine with it. I don't want to take it off the market the first day. I feel like I did my client no, a disservice. Yeah, you get that advertisement. Yeah, you get that yep. free advertisement. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, hey, it's 11.03. I want to be uh, respectful to everybody's time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hop off. If y'all have All questions, right. you have my information. Feel free, uh, again, to text me, and I'll send this info over to you. Thank you, Jerry. really appreciate it. Hey, you're it welcome. It was a pleasure, pleasure meeting you. Good luck. You're welcome. All right, Have thanks.